Hey everybody, thank you so much for your time and interest in this presentation. My name is Vinicius Ferreira and I'm a PhD candidate at Montana State University working with systematics of soft-bodied elateroidea under the supervision of Dr. Michael Ivey. Today I will tell you a story about net winged beetles. When most entomologists think on lysids, the first image that comes in mind are the epistomatic black, yellow, and red beetles that are commonly seen in this family all over the world. When I think on lysids, the first image that comes to my mind are lycus and Calopterum. But today I will talk about a literally brilliant exception to this rule, the genus Thanamos. Thanamos is one of the most spectacular New World lysid genus. The group is characterized by its bright and beautiful red and yellow coloration and a metallic elytral apex that's blue or green. Thanamos are endemic to the West Indies, with most species distributed in the Greater Antilles and two species in the Lesser. A couple of records in literature and a few specimens were intercepted at Porta in Florida, but always indicating that those were accidents. The colorful characteristics of Thonamos, their intriguing biology for which several species are found in large aggregations, as well as their involvement in mimicry rings with other beetles contributed for the relatively big attention the group has received. Over the years, Thonamos has been the subject of several studies, with many species descriptions and biology notes being published. Despite the general interest in the genus, the absence of an updated identification key and accurate species delimitation makes the identification of Thanamos an impossible task even nowadays. The combination of all of those problems, plus the fact that Thanamos are so pretty, encourage me to work with the group. The most up-to-date taxonomic literature for the group, a publication from 1922 and 1985, recognizes 12 valid species. The 1922 was the first to provide modern descriptions and diagnosis for the group, as well as a taxonomic key, some illustrations, and descriptions of three new species, followed by a paper in 1985, which described another new species. To better understand the group, I decided that it would be a good idea to begin with the oldest species described for the genus, Cantharis bicolor. Cantharis bicolor, from now on referred to simply as bicolor, was the first named species of the group back in 1763. According to Lincoln Mutchler, the species is known to occur in Jamaica and it's the most easily recognizable lysid species in the New World. Because of this, I thought this was going to be a relatively simple task and that sooner than later I would be done with this species. And I could not be more wrong about it. The original description of bicolor was very short and generic, and not very diagnostic, as you can see. It also mentioned that the species was from Senegal in Africa. The many subsequent authors who dealt with bicolor, most of which probably never saw a specimen, mentioned the same distribution for that species in Senegal in Africa. It wasn't until 1833 in Dejan's catalog that bicolor was mentioned as a species distributed in the New World, more specifically in Santa Dominga. These different authors seem to have found bicolor in many places in the West Indies, a remarkable distribution for such a tiny beetle. It is not very common for lysids of the same species to have such a big distribution range, especially in islands in the middle of the ocean. These squishy beetles are not very effective flyers and crossing the many islands in the West Indies are unusual for the group. It seemed very obvious to me that the old authors were not being able to correctly identify the species. And because all thanamos are superficially very similar among themselves, I suspected that there was something else going on with all of those records of bicolor. Apparently, I was not the only one who noticed that bicolor was all over the West Indies. In 1901, Bourgeois pointed out that after communicating with a colleague, he was sure that Cantharis bicolor was a senior synonym of Lycos militaris, a Jamaican species that have been named by Dauman in 1817 and that have been somehow neglected by some authors. Bourgeois also concluded that the actual distribution of bicolor was indeed only Jamaica. As for the old records found in other islands, Bourgeois created a new name for the widely distributed species found in Hispaniola, and he named that Chevrolatai in honor of Chevrolat, who had worked with the same species in the past. After the description of Chevrolatai and the paper by Langen Mutchler, nothing else of taxonomic relevance was published regarding this species. Of course, other species in the genus had a few things to be fixed, but none of them have been widely mentioned in literature as was by color. With the bicolor issue out of my way, things seem to have been very well resolved and I was ready to start working on other species. 
I noticed that none of the many previous researchers that worked with Thonamus had mentioned examining types of anything. This raised a red flag and I immediately thought that the lack of examination of type specimens could explain the confusing taxonomy and nomenclature status of bicolor. For this, I decided to contact the Linnaean Society of London to examine the types of Cantharis bicolor. Upon examination of photographs of all type specimens of Linnaeus by color, I was able to determine that the five sin types represented, in fact, two different species. Also, after examining the sin types of Lycus militaris from Dalman and comparing the images of militaris with the bicolor of Linnaeus, I could with no doubts assert that Linnaeus and Dalman species were not the same biological entity. Based on these observations, I was able to conclude that the oldest name available for the Jamaican species was Lycus militaris from Dalman, and that the Linnaean syntypes of bicolor in fact have represented two distinct species based on the evaluation of morphological characters. As for the two biological entities found in the type series of bicolor, I had to make a decision. To minimize the confusion in the already messy nomenclature and taxonomy of the group, I have decided that the specimen that presented a flat simple elytra would from now on be the species that would be carrying the name and the species concept of the name bicolor. For this, the syntype 8480 will be designated the lectotype of Cantharis bicolor, effectively making the specimen the sole name bearing type of that species. With that problem resolved, we ended nearly 260 years of a misleading consolidation of the idea that the big Jamaican Thonamus species was bicolor, when in fact the name for that species is Thonamus militaris, and I could focus in fixing the rest of the taxonomy of the group and in providing for the first time a phylogenetic hypothesis for the species within the genus. Before any further analysis with the group, I needed to solve the species concept of Thonamus, and based on what I learned in my traumatic experience with bicolor and militaris, I knew I needed to examine all type specimens for every species of Thonamus. Then, in addition of examining all type specimens, I gathered nearly 3,000 Thonamus specimens from 29 collections, making this one of the largest New World Elateroidea revisions. As a result, we were able to provide diagnostic characters for Thonamus. The genus can now be separated from all new world lysity by having a not rostrate head, a subpentagonal pronotum with the disc area strongly punctate, and each elytron with three costi. The paramere of the male genitalia forms a tube that encapsulates the median lobe, and the median lobe itself bears a long flagellum many times longer than the whole male genitalia, while the abdomen of females bear prolongations in the ventrites. After examination of specimens in their morphology, I was able to identify the boundaries of the species within the group. I figured out that what was originally thought to be 12 species was in reality 19. With six new species being described from Hispaniola, one of which is also present in Puerto Rico, we found one synonym among the Cuban and Bahamian bank species. And as briefly mentioned here before, the widely distributed species in Hispaniola, recorded as Thonamus chevrolati, was found to be a junior synonym of the true Thonamus bicolor from Hispaniola. As for the species level variation, key characters were based on elytrocosti arrangement, the presence or absence of mammiform tubercles on the elytra, those elevations that you see at the tips of the elytra of some specimens, presence or absence of an impression in the head, antennae shape, shape of legs, male genitalia, as well as the shape of the female abdomen. With the taxonomy of the group result, I was able to focus on the phylogenetic relationships of the species. Of the 19 recognized species, I generated new data for 9, and I was able to hypothesize relationships for the first time for this group. Our analysis using maximum parsimony, maximum likelihood, and Bayesian inference resulted in almost identical three topologies. The molecular phylogeny analysis corroborated an interesting biogeography pattern that we have suspected before. Species that had the same distribution on the islands formed monophyletic groups. The Montserratian clade was sister to the Jamaican clade, which together was sister to Cuba, and all Tonamos were sister to the species occurring in Hispaniola and Puerto Rico. Even though our molecular phylogeny allowed us to have an insight in the evolution and distribution patterns of the genus, we wanted to see how our tree would be if we had all species in our phylogenetic hypothesis. And for this, a list of morphological characters was generated for all thonamos with 77 characters of which 76 were generated for the first time. And our results were really good. 
Our total evidence phylogeny under a Bayesian inference approach render a tree topology almost identical to our molecular phylogeny, corroborating the same pattern of monophyletic groups of species per island. Because of the huge amount of missing data for over 60% of our sampling, our support levels for this total evidence tree were very low, and some of the morphology-only phylogenetic hypotheses were completely unresolved. However, despite the low support levels, the morphology data is useful in giving us a preliminary result that remains to be tested in the future once we have more molecular data for the other species, highlighting the nowadays undervalued importance of morphology data in a phylogenetic context. The use of morphology is important because it allowed us to identify synapomorphies and homoplasies that are very useful to the identification of diagnostic characters for the groups of species within Tanamas, allowing anyone anywhere with a microscope to identify the groups and species based on their morphology. Our data and trees allowed us to make further inferences and analysis related to the origins of Tanamas. The tree presented here sets the origin of the group with uh, a mean age of 48 million years ago. The results were impressive because the estimation of ages given to the group of species per island fit very well within the hypothesized range of ages for the horizon of the islands in the geological time of the West Indies. Our ancestral era reconstruction provided a relatively high support for the hypothetical ancestral area of Tanamus being Hispaniola or Hispaniola in Cuba. It also supported three dispersal and three vicariant events within Thanaumus. For us, it has always been very weird to have species of Thanaumus in Montserrat, but nowhere else in the Lesser Antilles. There are several mimetic beetles and other groups in Montserrat that do not show up on any other Lesser, indicating that this anomaly is real. It has been a long journey for me and my collaborators, over 40 years in the making of this study, and we're happy that we were able to straight down the taxonomy of the group and shed some light in the evolutionary history of it. However, so much remains to be studied. Uh, among this, the proper phylogenetic placement of Thanamus among the Lysids, uh, also a better understanding of these extreme morphological adaptations of the group, especially the structure in the female abdomen uh, and the long flagellum of the males, uh, as well as a more detailed biogeography study to understand the distribution pattern of the group. Uh, and with that, as usual, we ended our study with more questions than what we have started and wanting to know more about the Naumus and its unique biology, morphology, and evolutionary history. And to wrap up this talk, I want to thank my sponsors, especially the CNPQ of Brazil, for which without my PhD scholarship, none of this could have been done. Also, today's presentation is the result of collaborative efforts of hundreds of collectors, collaborators, curators, and entomologists from the past and from now. Uh, without these people, none of this would have happened. So thank you so much for everything you guys have done. And thank you for your time. And please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Ciao.